morning. I'm KC. This is Keystone Curiosity, where we talk about all things unique to the state of Pennsylvania. Today's episode is about the Gasha Hoppin Folk Festival. Located about 10 miles northeast of Pottstown, the Gasha Hoppin Folk Festival is perhaps the best tribute to the days of actual horsepower. In the 1700s and 1800s, the term Gasha Hoppin was used to describe the region of modern-day Montgomery County that stretched from about Schwanksville and Harleysville all the way up to about Bally and Hereford near the Berks and Bucks County borders. At that time, the people of Gasha Hoppin were primarily farmers and tradesmen who relied on the strength of the community to meet any needs that they couldn't provide for themselves. With the majority of them coming from the German-speaking areas of Central Europe and the lack of outside need, this communal self-sufficiency gave rise to a subculture of the American colonies that nowadays is known as the Pennsylvania Dutch. The culture would grow alongside the rest of the American melting pot, accepting the developments of industrialization and the convenience of the modern era. Within the past century, it's become common all across the nation that groups of similarly-minded history enthusiasts would get together and form historical societies. Pennsylvania is no exception, and in the 1960s, locals from about the Green Lane area would get together and incorporate into the Gasha Hoppin historians. They made it their mission to preserve the history of the local area, focusing heavily on the culture of the Pennsylvania Dutch. Some of the members would initially be involved in the early years of the Kutztown Folk Festival, which I've done a video on previously, but began to feel that the festival had become too commercial and wanted to see more of an emphasis on educational value. Because of this, they would establish a festival of their own at the Old Gasha Hoppin Church in Harleysville. Their intention was to accurately portray the history and trades of the local area, showing them off to the public in an act of preservation for the lessons of the past. And in 1967, the Gasha Hoppin Folk Festival was born. The first few festivals brought in hundreds of visitors, which in time would grow into thousands. As the popularity of the festival expanded, the Gasha Hoppin historians needed to find a larger space to hold their annual display, one where visitors wouldn't be parking in the cemetery. This would see the organizers hosting the festival in local Green Lane Park for a few years, but the needs of the historians continued to change, and the desire to have a permanent storage space to allow easier setup would see them continuing their search for their ideal location. As the years went by, the historians would end up purchasing the property of the Henry Andes House in Fagleysville and used it to house their festival to this day. Even after more than 50 years, the current organizers of the Gasha Hoppin Folk Festival still live by the values of their founders. Hundreds of volunteers and demonstrators bring their expertise to the festival grounds, showing off their trades, crafts, and even more of the mundane everyday activities like doing laundry. These individuals bring a depth to the festival that I have never seen anywhere else across the entire United States. The historians team up with master seamstresses and tailors to ensure that every one of the demonstrators are dressed in period-appropriate, historically accurate clothing. The result is a level of immersion that is unparalleled and more akin to a reenactment than a festival. While I still stand by my love of the Kutztown Folk Festival and its portrayal on how the Pennsylvania Dutch culture persists to this day, it pales in comparison to the amount of effort placed on the preservation of the roots of that culture roots that I've only ever seen shown here at Gasha Hop. Almost everyone knows how people used to have to manually pump water from a well, but have you ever considered how these pumps were made? The Gasha Hoppin historians have, and they make a point to show and teach this overlooked necessity from years long past. Gunsmiths show their original methods of rifling. Bakers make over 50 pies from scratch in wood stoves, while timber framers build structures without a single scrap of metal. And despite all this attention to detail, the most authentic part of the entire festival is their apprentice program. Over a hundred kids from the local area volunteer each year, taking the chance to learn these trades in the same way they would have in the 18th and 19th centuries, working side by side with the masters. Just as these trades would have been handed down through generations, here experts pass down their knowledge through projects and lessons, allowing these school students an education whilst demonstrating these lessons to festival goers as well. Because of the combination of all these things, I can't possibly come up with a better way to preserve this aspect of the culture while still making it entertaining for every part of the family, as it is a festival after all. And the food is fantastic! 
All across the festival grounds, demonstrators will offer up samples of their sauerkraut and apple butter as they teach you how their forebears would have made these delicacies in days long past. Oh, you'll certainly find your summer festival foods like funnel cake and watermelon, of course, but the cultural foods of the Pennsylvania Dutch are also prominent throughout the day, though they did run out of foshnuts before I could get it. Summer sausage and pickled red beet eggs are my particular favorites, but I did make it a point to grab a few AP cakes and a shoe fly pie before I left. And above everything else, I believe that the most important message from the Gasha Hoppen Folk Festival is one of community. Just as it had been in the days that they portray, these demonstrators showed the importance of playing a role in your environment, as the wheelwright would fix his neighbor's wagon, who would in turn provide the wheelwright's lumber to build a home. Everyone had a role and a specialty that they used to make their own small world a better place, to help and be helped, strengthen their community by acting as a community. These long forgotten lessons can be learned from the Gasha Hoppen historians who maintain the small museum and library in nearby Green Lane, or simply by visiting next year's festival at the Andes House, which sits about 45 minutes away from either Chester Springs or Quakertown. And if this is the kind of thing that you'd like to be a part of and not just visit, I implore you to contact the historians, who are always welcoming volunteers and looking to expand on the demonstrations offered. So if you'd like to participate or have a unique trade you'd like to show, please follow the links in the description and let them know. Regardless, I hope you all get the opportunity to visit the Gasha Haben Folk Festival in the coming years and witness this truly unique approach to cultural education and historical preservation. That's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. As for the usual, if you have any suggestions or where you'd like to see me go next, feel free to leave them in the comments below. In the meantime, hit that like and subscribe so that you can receive notifications about anything else near the Gosh Hoppin' Folk Festival or all across the state of Pennsylvania itself. In the meantime, you'll have a good one.